You might not think this is very exciting, putting walnut stain on this oak board, but what's really neat about this is I made the stain. And I'm going to talk you through what you need to do if you want to make your own walnut stain. What I did is I'm lucky enough to have some walnut trees right here at my place. So in the fall, when the walnuts are ready, I gathered them up. Notice I have rubber gloves on because what you don't want is to get walnut stain on your hands. It will be on there a long time. It's a very effective stain. So wearing rubber gloves, gather up the walnuts. You want to put about 20 nuts into a cheesecloth bag like this. Then I'm going to gather up the corners. I'm making like a big tea bag here with the walnuts in there. Now the batch I had here was done when the walnuts were absolutely fresh. They were right off the tree. These are a little bit drier, but this is still going to work. Once I've got that gathered up, then I want to keep them in the bag. So I'm going to pinch that closed. Now here's the recipe that I used. I used a garage sale stock pot. Don't go and get your best kettle out of the house. And put about two gallons of water in there. Then what I did is I brought that two gallons of water to a boil. Once it was boiling, I shut it off and dropped my tea bag full of walnuts in there. I let that sit overnight. Now, the next morning what I had, I had walnut stain, but it was very, very weak. It was about the color of tea, and I wanted something darker than that. So leaving that bag in, I brought it to a boil again, and then I watched it. And actually what I did was I took a board, I took a piece of scrap oak, and I dipped it into the liquid every once in a while to see how dark it was when it came out. When it got to the darkness I wanted, when it got to this consistency, I shut off the heat, took the tea bag out, and I was done. So what you can do is you can control the darkness of your final mix just by boiling that down. I ended up reducing it from a two gallon initial mix to about one gallon, so reduced it by about half. Once you've got that, let it cool down, and you can store it in a jar like this. Now, storing means you've got to keep this in a refrigerator. What you just made, you made walnut juice is what you did. So like any other natural product, if this just sits on the shelf in your shop, it's going to go bad on you. So you do want to date it so that you know when you made it, and you want to keep it in a refrigerator. When you apply it, this is a water-based stain that you made, so especially on oak like this, it's going to raise the grain as it dries. Generally, after the first coat, you're going to have to do just a little bit of scuffing to knock that fuzz, those whiskers back down. And after that, it's not too bad. It doesn't do too much more grain raising. Now you can see the difference here. This was a raw board that I was just brushing the stain onto. This board, in order to get this depth, this darkness to it, has got about six coats of walnut stain on there. So it's not quite as dark. It doesn't have anywhere near the amount of pigment in it that or dye that a commercially made walnut stain might. So if you want depth of color, you gotta build it up. But I think it's really, really neat that we can go completely natural with a product like this, making your very own walnut stain from walnut husk. Give it a try, see how the recipe works for you.